Hey, Chloe. So, I was just wondering, are you still not home? Huh? Good evening, Lila. As you know, me and your brother are on our honeymoon right now. We'll be back in three days. Hmm, three days, huh? Got it. Why? What's that about? Oh, no real reason in particular. I was just curious, that's all. That's all I wanted you for. Bye! What the hell was that all about? Hey, hey, Chloe! I just wanted to check something with you. There are no changes to you guys' plan to come back from your honeymoon the day after tomorrow, right? Huh? R right. No changes to the plan. You won't be coming home early or anything like that, right? One of you won't be coming home first, right? There's absolutely nothing out of the ordinary, is that correct? Nope. As long as we don't have any unforeseen circumstances to deal with, everything will be going ahead as planned. I see, I see, okay. Lila, why are you asking me these things? I was confused when you asked me yesterday too, but now it's getting even weirder. Hmm, well, I suppose it's not like you can make it home straight away anyways, so I might as well just come out with it. Come out with what? So, here's the thing. Me and my husband are living in yours and my brother's new house. Excuse me? In actual fact, we moved in and had all of our things carried here in a moving van five days before you left for your honeymoon. What in God's name are you talking about? Stop joking around, Lila. There are all sorts of reasons that's not possible, not least of them security. Even if I humor you for the sake of argument, having your luggage carried in wouldn't have been possible either. Wrong! They carried it all in without a hitch, even the furniture. The moving company were great, they clearly knew what they were doing. Your new house now belongs to me and my husband, there's no doubt about it. Uh? What the hell? If you're being serious, the security team have let us down big time, I'll be having words. The house is probably in my brother's name right now, but when you guys get back from your honeymoon, we'd like to go through the necessary procedures to have it switched over to my husband's. Will you pass the message on to my brother? What are you talking about? Stop messing me around, Lila. Seriously, this can't be true. There are just too many reasons why what you're saying is impossible. There's no way you're living in our house right now. I just don't believe it. We most definitely are. We already had all our stuff carried in. Plus, we've already been living here five days. We live here, so that means it's ours now. Sorry, Chloe. You snooze, you lose. Lila? I heard you pulled a similar trick ages ago before I met my husband. Back when you both lived together with your parents? Huh? Your dad had to leave home for a while due to work, and the moment he left, you moved into his old room and declared it your lawful possession for eternity. Apparently, you could barely contain your excitement at the thought of him coming back to try and get rid of you. Nothing came of it in the end, because you gave up when he came back and you saw how furious he was, saying it was just a practical joke. Oh, that? <laughs> That was so fun! <laughs> my brother has such a good memory. My husband's telling me I should ignore this because you're probably just being mischievous like you were when you were a kid. But I've gotta admit, you got under my skin with this one. Listen, Lila, I don't know you as well as your brother, and I don't see the funny side of this. I know you might not be my biggest fan, but even for a practical joke, this is going too far. We're in the middle of our honeymoon for crying out loud, which means I'm sorry, but if you'll excuse me, we're going to enjoy the rest of our time together. I won't be replying to any more of your messages while we're away. Wow. I'm sorry to have to be a killjoy and rain on your parade, but what you're doing is unacceptable and I don't see the funny side. Are you sure that's what you want? If you ignore me, your house is barely going to be recognizable when you get back. Be careful! Me and my husband will have no choice but to enjoy our hobbies to the fullest. Hey, are you ignoring me already? Fine, have it your way. If that's how you're playing this, you leave me with no choice. Such a shame. It's time to make a house a home. Me and my hubby are going to customize it until it suits our style and taste perfectly. I hope you're ready for what's coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> First up, in a move so bold it would shock an African queen, we painted a huge heart on the outside wall. 
The wall is white, so the bright red heart really stands out. It's so bold you can see it from a mile off. I think it really makes a statement about who I am. I drew more hearts and stars all over the walls inside the house. I just drew them totally at random as the mood took me. There's actually something so artistic about how all of this is turning out. I should be nominated for a culture award. Who would have thought I was such a talented artist? I found my true calling after all this time. Don't worry though, it's not just pictures. I painted my whole room with a pink and black color scheme and you wouldn't believe how well they complement each other. My husband decided he wanted a life of luxury, so he's dedicating two rooms to his beloved plastic model painting hobby. He's getting them set up as we speak. Thanks for buying us such a good house, Chloe. Thanks for giving it to us as well. We're super grateful. I'm having so much fun. I feel like a little girl again. Lila, we just got home. Hmm? Hey, make sure you don't go entering without permission. This is our house now, you know. I know it might feel strange to you, but you have to respect our boundaries. Um, but we're already sat in the living room enjoying a cup of coffee. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? Me and my husband are in the living room drinking beer and watching TV. What a weird thing to make up. Where are you really? Were you serious about moving into our house? Because I'm starting to think it was all just one big made-up prank. I did think there was some oddly specific stuff in the messages you were sending me, so I asked your mother just in case. And lo and behold, she confirmed you and your husband had been living in a house in the neighborhood until recently. But you moved out, and she didn't know where to, so I thought it might be true. That's right. Duh, because it is true. Oh dear, you didn't think I was just making it up, did you? As if you'd think I'd really do something like that. This beautiful, detached house with a yard belongs to us now. This is what you get for letting your guard down on your honeymoon. It's hardly fair that you and my brother are the only ones who get nice things. I don't mean it like that. It does seem to be true that you moved into someone's house uninvited, just not ours. If we're being specific, our new house isn't actually a house at all. It's an apartment in a high-risk tower block. Huh? Not just that, but they have tighter security than Guantanamo Bay. There's a passcode system and security guards to ensure that only actual residents can enter. There's also a receptionist at the front desk. Me and my husband told the receptionist we'd be leaving for a little while, before we went away on our honeymoon, so they'd never let anyone else into our apartment. You wouldn't have gotten in just the two of you, let alone had all of your things carried inside by a removal company. If the security guards didn't pick up on it, the cameras would have. Uh huh? We phoned reception to put our minds at rest after your weird messages. And just as we thought, there's nothing out of the ordinary going on with our apartment. Whose house did you guys break into? Um, wait a sec. So, let me get this straight. Your new house isn't really a house at all, but an apartment in a high-rise tower block? Yes, exactly like I just said. How the hell did you get into a whoever's house you're in right now? Did you have a key? I, I found a key I didn't recognize in Mom's key case when I was over at her place. She was cooking for us in the kitchen, so I thought I may as well have a look through her things. It had the same address I overheard Mom mention on the phone a little while ago engraved into it. Given the timing, I didn't see what it could be other than the key to your new place. So I did what anyone would do and slipped it into my pocket while Mom wasn't looking. No way! Is it the detached house on the house seating estate 10 minutes walk away from the southern ticket gate at the Apple Station? By any chance? Um... Yes, actually it is. You know what? Whoa! You've really gone and done it this time. What do you mean? Gone and done what? That's the house that your Aunt Kimmy is supposed to be moving into soon. My Aunt Kimmy? No way! But she's abroad for work right now, how can that be? You're lying! She's coming back soon because her company retransferred her to a branch in the state. And she bought that house as soon as she heard the news. All procedures regarding the sale and handover are complete, and it's already in her name. She's currently living in a temporary apartment in New York, while working at the company branch there to finalize the handover of all the projects she was in charge of abroad. That's why she left the key with her sister, your mom. The plan was to put the finishing touches on her work stuff 
and then move into her new house and start a new life over here in earnest. Oh my god. That conversation you just mentioned overhearing on the phone, I'm guessing that was your mom speaking to your aunt Kimmy about everything I just told you. Seriously? There should have been a mountain of cardboard boxes tacked up in the first room after you enter through the front door. Are they still there? That's all of your Aunt Kimmy stuff. Um, well, we, uh... We might have sold some of it. You sold your Aunt Kimmy stuff? We found some expensive-looking brand clothing when we were looking through them, and we just did what we thought made the most sense. What the hell are you playing at, Lila? What was I supposed to do? I thought it was all yours. Come on, see my side of things. How was it fair for my brother's new wife to have nicer things than me? Anyone would have done the same thing in my situation. I'm not sure about that, you know. Anyway, you don't have much time. You need to get on the phone to whichever stores you sold your Aunt Kimmy's things to and see if there's any way you can get them back. Hopefully they haven't been sold already. There's a chance you might have to buy them back at a higher price, but it can be helped. Go, go, go! What? Buy them back? Oh, it's no good. They sold the last item to someone 10 minutes before I called. I see. My husband's currently explaining to your Aunt Kimi what she did over the phone. Oh my god, what? You told on me? You rat, how could you betray me like this? Obviously I told her. You think she doesn't have the right to know about a pair of lunatics breaking into her house and selling her things? I had no choice. Anyway, she wasn't happy. My husband had to keep reminding her he was only the messenger. She says your options are either to pay her one lump sum in compensation or to find exact replacements of every single item you sold and see to it she gets everything back as it was before you interfered. What? She says she's going to the house tomorrow to check on the situation. She says you're to stay there until she's seen you both and are absolutely not leaving under any circumstances. Are you joking? Like hell I'm gonna sit waiting around here for my Aunt Kimmy to come and let me have it. You might not know this, but my Aunt Kimmy is super scary when she gets mad. My whole family walk on eggshells around her because no one wants to get on her bad side. We had a feeling you might say that, so your mom and dad should be arriving anytime now. They'll be making sure you won't go anywhere. You're now officially under house arrest. What? Apparently your husband's parents are on their way too. Wow. This so cannot be happening! You have to be joking me! You're making a big mistake if you think you can worm your way out of this one. It's time to face the music, Lila. You've left me with no choice. Switch to defensive tactics. I'll lock every door in the house and hold myself up in here till they all get bored and give up. Oh yeah, thanks for the reminder. I forgot to mention, your mom has a spare front door key. What?! No! Why? Impressive, you're still messaging me? Why didn't you tell me before it came to this? I never would have done all this if I'd known it was my aunt's house. All you had to do was tell me. Moving into someone's house without their permission while they're away isn't exactly something normal people do, is it? How exactly was I supposed to know where you were? Seems like you forgot all about the announcement that your Aunt Kimmy's stay in Sweden would be coming to a close. Maybe if you'd have remembered, you could have put two and two together. No, I didn't forget. I just didn't think she was coming back that soon. Besides, I didn't know anything about her new house. I see. Still, ignorance is just no justification for the way you've behaved. Chloe, please. My husband just messaged your mom explaining how instead of facing responsibility for what you did, you're hiding from them while complaining to me over text. Hey, wait! Stop it! I found such a good hiding place! Ugh! It's time to face the music, Lila. Lila's mom asked me if I could buy them some time by keeping her busy while they figure out where she was hiding. I happily obliged and kept her talking to me until the in-laws arrived at occupied Aunt Kimmy's house, after which point they quickly tracked her down and captured her. The next day, a furious Aunt Kimmy arrived accompanied by her lawyer. After an extremely long and tiring discussion, Aunt Kimmy agreed to settle for $75,000 in compensation from the shamed couple for their actions. Of course, that included the cost of the items they sold, but it also covered the cost of repairing the house, which had been left in an abysmal state after being subjected to Lila and her husband's artistic end of wars. 
Finally, it included a sum to make up or the emotional distress the whole episode has caused. The moment Lila heard the figure, she let out a shrieking scream so piercing it could be said to be heard from outside of the solar system. After that, both her and her husband had no choice but to start working several jobs each. Now under the strict supervision of her aunt Kimmy, they led a miserable, soul-crushing existence of being worked to exhaustion on a daily basis to pay off their exorbitant debts. Daniel, can you come home early tonight? I have something important to talk to you about. Eh, uh, something important? I have a business dinner scheduled with my client tonight. Can you not reschedule? Um, I would like to avoid that. I mean a very important client. What is it about? Should I tell you no? I don't think it's best for you to hear this during work. You're scaring me now. But now I have to know, so yes. Okay. Long story short, I want a divorce. What? A divorce? Nice try, but April Fool's a little while ago. I'm not joking. I want a divorce. We need to part ways. Wait a second. Did I do something? I don't get it. I just don't want to live with you anymore. I don't want to drag on the life I dislike any longer. So I need to restart. Trisha, what's going on? Did something happen? No, nothing in particular. I just don't want to be with you anymore. I'm asking what's making you feel that way. I don't understand. Uh, there was a decent reason you want a divorce, right? To not want to be with you is not a good enough reason. I'm asking why? What about Alice? Have you forgotten we have a daughter? You need to be clear. A reason? Well, I can give you a couple. But I guess the biggest reason is that the life I live with you doesn't make me happy anymore. You work, you're nice, I think you're a good dad. But as a man, you're not attractive. I think you're boring. Boring? You want a divorce because I'm boring? I don't feel any joy when I'm with you. In fact, it stresses me when you're at home at the weekends. I don't want you around. So you don't like me anymore? I guess not. It's been 15 years since we got married. So perhaps it's inevitable that I don't have feelings for you anymore. I still love you, Trisha. Oh God, stop it. I don't even want you to say that to me anymore. It makes me sick. If we don't break it now, I'm gonna start to hate you. So it's better if we get a divorce sooner, before I start hating my daughter's father. Isn't there something we can do to fix it? If you want me to change, I will. You know what? I'm canceling tonight's dinner. I'll come home, so let's talk it through, okay? No, I don't need to talk about anything. My decision is made. I finally told you after thinking it through. I'm way past the phase of trying to fix things together. Trisha, please! You have to give me a chance! I will do anything! No, it's over. I'm done with you. As a kind gesture, I'm telling you this directly and not through a lawyer. The only thing left is for you to sign the divorce papers I've prepared. And to discuss Alice's custody, that's all. How are you gonna explain to Alice? She's in high school. She's old enough to choose who she wants to live with. Wait, sorry, I'm still in disbelief. I don't get it. Well, I can imagine it would be hard for you to accept. But you need to understand that my mind is set and that I don't have any feelings for you. We can't amend our relationship. So please sign the papers as soon as you can. That is the only thing I ask you. Daniel, how much longer do you need to sign those papers? I need you to move on. I uh, know. If you know, then do it. We have decided what we need to. Alice made her choice to stay with me. Why is it taking you so long? I hate the thought of not living with you two anymore. You're being like a child now. I have already moved out of the house two days ago. Alice is getting ready to leave next week. Why can't you be a man and move on? Make up your mind already. That's not fair. I never wanted a divorce in the first place. I want to keep living with my daughter. Don't be such a baby. It's not like you're never seeing her again. That's not the point. Alice said she wants to start her new life with me. You better not do anything to make her think otherwise. I won't. I will respect her decision. She was pretty clear that she wants to live with you. That she didn't want to live with me anymore. Maybe Alice feels the same way I feel about you. Am I that bad? So much so that my family doesn't want to be around me anymore? See, this is what annoys me about you. 
You're being so indecisive and dragging this on. We have already agreed to get a divorce. I may have agreed, but I still don't understand. You suddenly tell me you don't want to be with me anymore. It was an ambush from my perspective. You need to at least give me a reason I can understand. Seriously? We have to go over this again? How many times have I told you that I don't have feelings for you anymore? That's all. It's my feelings. It's about me. So there is no point for you to try to understand. I know. Patricia, I'm sorry. I know you've been out a lot the past couple of months. That was because you didn't want to be with me, wasn't it? Now that I look back, I see you were giving me hints. I wish I saw it sooner. Well, I don't think I went out that much, did I? Compared to before, yes, you did. I thought that maybe you needed time away from the house. Now that Alice is in high school and you have a bit more time to yourself. But it was because of me, wasn't it? Right. Yes, it was because of you. I wish I realized sooner, before you lost your feelings for me. I'm sorry that our marriage didn't work out, and that I couldn't make you happy. Well, I don't blame it all on you. There were things I could have done better, too. So don't be so hard on yourself. Let's just move on with our lives. It is a huge decision for me. But fine, I will sign. Would you like me to get them fired up the court as well? Yes, if you can. Let me know once it's done. Okay. Trisha, thank you for everything. Hey, Alice, sir, I couldn't pick up your call. I was in a meeting at work. What's up? Something happened? Well, kind of. Are you almost done at work? Yeah, I was getting ready to go soon. Okay, good. Um, I know this is a bit sudden, but can I come home to live with you again? Like, from today. I'm on my way to your office now. What, on your way here? And you want to live with me? I thought you wanted to live with your mom. Well, yeah. But I'm done with the revenge, so not anymore. Revenge? Yeah. I said I wanted to live with mom only for revenge. The truth is, I want to live with you. Sorry, I'm not following. Did you do something to mom? Kind of. And we're sorry for putting you in the middle of everything, and we're sorry we decided to divorce out of the blue, but it wasn't just your mom who made the decision. I agreed in the end, too. No, that's not why I wanted revenge. Hey, Dad, let me ask you before I go on. You were over Mom, right? Well, yes. After all she said to me, let's just say I don't wish for us to start older. Okay, that's good. Listen, this might be a surprise, but you need to know something. Okay, what is it? Mom wanted a divorce because she was having an affair. What? An affair? Yeah. You know she brought up divorce out of nowhere. Yes, but... Uh... She never mentioned anything about someone else. Of course she wouldn't. She didn't want to make it look like she was at fault. It would only be a disadvantage for her if you found out. You trust her too much, Dad. Mom has been in an affair for the past year. I wish I didn't find out neither. But I accidentally saw her go into a motel with another man. What? What were you doing near a motel? I'm sorry. I once lied that I was staying at a friend's house. But we actually went to this gig that this band was playing. <clears throat> I see. I'm so sorry I lied, Dad. I thought you'd say no. That's okay. So that's how you found out about Mom's affair? Yeah. Why don't you tell me sooner? You could have talked to me. I didn't have any proof. I know that you would have believed my story. But Mom is very careful of her tracks, so she could have talked her way out of it. I thought of telling you once you two were going through divorce. But you were so hurt, Dad. I felt horrible for you. Oh, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I should have been there to listen. No, no. Nothing is your fault, Dad. This is all on Mom. It must have been hard for you to be with Mom all this time. Yeah, but I feel better now. Now that I got my revenge. 
I think she'll contact you soon, asking to get back together. What? Alice, what did you do? Hey, I've arrived at your house now. I will give you the details later. I'll be outside of your building. Don't keep me waiting. Hi, Daniel. How are you and Alice? We're doing well. Sorry about her moving back. I might not have been the best mom for these past months. I've been busy trying to find a job, so I haven't really been there for her. You said she wants to live with me going forward. That's okay with you, right? You did say she's old enough to make her own decisions. Yes, she already messaged me too. She said she can't live with me anymore. I didn't realize I was such a bad mom for her. She says to change legal custody too. If that's what she wants, we should change it. Although we only have a few years left until she turns 18, but I will arrange documents. I've been thinking a lot since I moved out. About what? You know, if I should have stayed. What do you say? Do you regret getting a divorce? What if I say I do? Now that I'm on my own, I finally realize how much I've been dependent on you, Daniel. I thought I would be happy with Alice, but nothing seemed to go right. All I could think about was how great you were as a husband. Just as Alice said. <laughs> what? Your guy left you, didn't he? Huh? What are you talking about? There is no guy. Stop playing with me. Alice saw you going to a motel with another man. She saw wrong. That was not me. I had never been to a motel with someone. You can't prove anything. Yes, we can. Alice decided to live with you for a while so that she can collect evidence. You're lying. Nope. Well, you were having an affair with your boss from your part-time job, weren't you? Better yet, he was married too. He broke off our marriage because he said that he wants to get a divorce to marry you. But then his wife found out and he dumped you instead, right? No. Which part am I wrong? He fooled me. He said we'd be together. That's the only reason why I divorced you. But then he started saying his wife and kids are more important to him. It was a fraud. Oh, so you think you are the victim? The truth is that you left me for another man. Do you think that makes me feel any better than before? No, it makes me feel worse. I was an idiot. I let that guy talk me into betraying you. And now it has all come back to bite me. I'm so sorry, Daniel. You don't have to apologize to me. It's all done and over with. What? Do you mean you forgive me? What do you think I am, stupid? No, I don't forgive you. I mean, you don't have to apologize to me verbally. Because I'm suing you. Sue me? On what grounds? We settled our divorce. You can't ask me to pay you anything. We will see about that. I've already hired a lawyer to look into this. You were not telling the truth when you made me sign those papers. So he thinks there's a good chance we can work something up. Let's sit tight and see, shall we? Wait, I'm being sued by his wife too? So what? You got your division of assets, pay from that. But then I won't be able to live. Then I advise you work. I've only had a small part-time job since we married. It's impossible for me to find a decent job at this age. Daniel, I'm sorry. I'll never cheat on you again. I'll never betray you, so please, take me back. Give me another chance. No way. You said you thought it through. You said your mind was made up. I finally see that you're the most important to me. Well, moments ago, you were head over heels about your boss. And now that he's done with you... You want me to take you back? You got some strong nerves. Please, forgive me. I should have realized how lucky I was to have a kind husband like you. I will never hurt you again. I will spend the rest of my life only for my family. Nah, you can live however you want. If you stay with a boring guy like me, you might just change your mind again. And also, Alice has not forgiven you either. She may be older now, but she still is a child. Do you realize how shocked she was when she saw you two? I will apologize to her. Can we please get back together if she forgives me? Please. That's not possible. She is sitting next to me right now, watching us sending these messages. And she says she never wants to hear from you again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was wrong about everything. I'm sorry for having an affair, and I'm sorry for ambushing you to a divorce. Please forgive me. It's too late. Way too late. You're the one who told her not to be such a baby. And you said, let's just move on with our lives, right? Hey, 
Afterwards, my lawyer found a way to sue my ex-wife and her boss. I knew by suing her boss, there was a possibility of him and his wife getting a divorce too. But I heard they chose to stay together because their children were still very young. In the end, Trisha lost the majority of her division of assets to pay me and his wife for her wrongdoing. Trisha broke, tried to get help from her own parents. But Alice had already told him what happened. Furious, they didn't let Trisha set foot in their home. I don't know where she is now, but I haven't been contacted by authorities or anything, so I'm pretty sure she is alive. I wanted to sue her for child support, but I haven't been able to because her whereabouts are unknown. After what we went through, I am living happily with my daughter. Although it's just the two of us, we haven't had any problem from not having Trisha around. We have been managing well. We bought several new appliances to make up with the lost manpower and it's been working great. By the way, in case you were wondering what my daughter did to get revenge, she found proof that the two were having an affair and shared it with his wife. She seemed satisfied that she got what she needed to get. But after seeing all the evidence she collected, I felt horrible to have made my daughter do such things. I was completely useless from the shock of the divorce back then. If I had been stronger and smarter, perhaps I could have taken the hard role she took on. When I heard the details of her revenge, I felt so horrible that I could not help but cry from regret. She always acts cool, but deep down I know she is very hurt. So my top priority now is to provide her a safe home full of love. Alice being a teenage girl, it's hard not to be an embarrassing dad, but I will do whatever it takes to keep a smile on her face and show her that love without betrayal exists in this world. 